Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about habits and clever programmers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what habits have clever programmers learned to avoid? Well, I would say that the clever programmers have learned to stop being people pleasers. Now that sounds like a like a bad thing, but it's actually not. I'm not saying that you should be rude to people or be condescending to people. I'm saying that you need to understand in very in pretty much the same way a doctor needs to or a coach needs to understand what's best for your client what to do instead of doing the thing that will make the client happy or put a smile on their face think about the what's best for them rather than just telling them what they want to hear that's what I'm trying to say here basically and the reason why I'm saying this is because I have worked now for a few years with different levels of programmers some much 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 more senior than I am some that are just completely fresh out of college and some that have a few more years of experience and so forth and the same trend is always true regardless of their experience level and that is that when you're dealing with a developer who has the tendency to always just say don't worry I'll fix it it will be fast or a developer who always bends always complies regardless of the request and always tries to make it basically whatever be is being requested the, it's it's for them just a question of how can I make the code comply and if they know that something is gonna turn into a hack or a request is gonna actually turn out really ugly in the code that's not the problem for them because it's it's better for them or it's easier for them to make the code do what they want here and now than it is to have a conversation and and have a bigger picture type of perspective uh, with their managers and this is bad this is really really bad because it's sort of, I, I would say that it's it's a way for the developer to avoid feeling as if they're doing something bad or being emotionally punished short term but the thing is that often I see this lead to much worse things further down the road because the thing that happens is that the fir like the first few times you do this your stakeholder is going to be happy with you and sure you might get into this spot where you get some praise actually because you're so fast and you always you fix things so quickly and so forth and guys I promise you that feels really really nice it's great to be told that you're extra good and stuff like that but what you don't want is to have to maintain that and especially when it, that's especially going to be hard for you to maintain the sensation of that you're so fast because you're basically building up a false sensation of uh, of the world in your stakeholders head because once you get into this habit of always complying and always making quick fixes and hacks to make them happy when you actually get to a point where you can no longer do that when you actually see that well this is actually really bad well then they're going to start questioning you why are you so slow why, why is this taking so long this thing took so was so quick and this is so so it's not it's not the same what, what's going on when you get to that point it's a little bit like a, you become a door you, you for I've seen that I've seen this before you've become a doormat where now it's much harder for you to actually stand your ground and say no actually we we do need to do this I'm not saying that you should be crazy about this because there's people on the other extreme of this who think that you, the code is the most important thing and they will they will like s slam down their fist and say no we need to do this refactor we need to do this and that and blah the blah the blah, blah and like that doesn't work either but what I'm saying is that you you have to understand that there is a price to pay for having this uh, having things easy on you to always say yes and always feel like you're doing the right thing and never having to have a have a justify something to your stakeholders and what happens usually and I've seen this happen with as I said even uh, with junior developers 
I think that that's completely forgivable because in the beginning of things you are uncertain very often of your, your role in IT. But I have coworkers that I work with that have twice my experience who do this and it's because they're nice people. Like they, they inherently they are the sort of person who just wants to get stuff done. They don't really want to think all that much about what's best for the product. They just want to do, like they want to be told what to do and then just do it. And it's, it, I have spent quite some time uh, uh, in the past, fixing. I'm not want to. I don't want to say the because I didn't do it alone. It's just that we had a sit down me and my coworker, and I told this person that, dude, I I understand that you want to make our that's sales happy and so forth, but you have to understand that you are the expert here. They don't know what what it means for the system when you do all these little special one-off solutions for them that makes them <coughs> makes them happy it's like you're giving them candy but your kid uh, like you're, you're gi giving your child candy every time they have a uh, they uh, they cry and what happens is that you condition them to this and all of a sudden they're fat as fuck and have diabetes and it's nobody it's your fault because you are enabling this behavior. So what we need to do, you and me, is that we need to start making decisions that are going to be healthy for the project because the project has actually decayed to the point now where they're not, they're no longer, the only time they're happy is when you do these special like one-off solutions for them, but the rest of the time they're really unhappy that the system is so unstable. The most common complaint that we're getting is that the system isn't working or there's bugs or things like that. They can't trust the system. So the perception is that the system is shit. And why, does, why has this happened? Well, they have contributed a lot to this happening because they've asked for all of these things. But you are fundamentally the person who decides what goes into the code base. And if you can't be trusted to stand up for what is needed to, hap uh, to happen in order for the system to work well, I'm not saying it has to be perfect, I'm just saying well, well, then you, are for, you, you and me, like we are ultimately the people to blame here. We, it's our job to sometimes say no. It is our job to ex try to explain to our stakeholders why we need a certain amount of time to do certain things because otherwise the system won't actually work. And if we communicate with our stakeholders about this and make them understand why these things are important, then we've done our job. But always saying yes without ever having that conversation is uh, that's a fault on our side and we can't blame them for the system being shit because they have no idea what makes a system good or what makes it bad they don't know if they're asking for the moon or if they're asking for a small thing and that's on us so what i want you to take away from this is that the habit that i believe that the really clever if that uh, if, if we can call it that programmers understand is that there is a balance between doing exactly what your stakeholder wants and trying to do what's right by the system. You can't be a purist and always say that the system comes first and that you should have outlandish requirements on how well your code base should work. That's not possible. You have to be pragmatic about it. But yet the, on the other hand, you can't be a yes man or a yes woman. You can't be a people pleaser because if you are a people pleaser, the unavoidable end station for that sort of behavior is that people will still be unhappy with that the system is shit because all these hacks and quick solutions because that's usually what it comes down to the people get like your stakeholders get happy when you get something done extra quick or extra fast or something like that the problem is that, uh, that you and I both know is that these things have a cost quick hacks cost legacy uh, it causes legacy and you're going to have to deal with that and your stakeholders are still going to be unhappy so you really have to think about them as children who's always asking for candy sometimes they deserve some candy and sometimes they're going to have to eat their vegetables and you're going to have to be the grown-up in this conversation because you're the only person who knows when which is appropriate have a great day